Hello everyone, I'm Kemil Walford. Welcome to another session. Now today we are not in Kemster's lab. Today we're doing Chem with Chem. Got it? So we're looking at um, a CXC past paper question. We're looking at June 2019, question number four. And this is from paper two. Of course, the structure of the paper. All right. So this question was based on section A of the syllabus, principle, principles of chemistry. And um, candidates were tested on their understanding of the basis for the arrangement of elements in the periodic table, including trends in group two, the, re the relation of the structure of sodium chloride, diamond, and graphite to their properties and uses, and also on making predictions of properties of unknown elements based on their position in the periodic table. Now, there are a few thing, other things that were tested on, but we'll um, go through them as we do the questions. All right, so we're just going to go right into it. This question is for 15 marks, so we don't really want to spend more than, say, 20 minutes on this question. I will be doing another video on how we allocate time for a particular question, so look out for that. And if it's your first time to this channel, um, please consider subscribing um, if you find the material or the content covered here um, helpful. So let's um, dive right in. You're provided with two identical samples of white powdery substances labeled D and E. One sample is finely ground sodium chloride and the other sample is finely ground diamond. Describe one simple test including the observations which could be used to distinguish between D and E. Now, in the early part of chemistry, when you're looking at structure of solids, we learn about diamond, the structure of diamond versus the structure of graphite versus the structure of sodium chloride. There's a nice table that outlines the differences. Now, it's good to commit those to memory, but it's even better to be able to apply, you know, the knowledge there to be able to, you know, solve a, a problem. And this is a popular lab that uh, we normally um, look at. We're given different um, substances and we try to identify the structure of the solid based on how, just based on how, um, based on the observations we get when we test them with, say, we test for their solubility, we test for um, their conductivity if the solid actually dissolves to form a solution. So we look for things like solubility in water, solubility in um, organic um, solvent, and so on. But for this one, to, we want to distinguish between sodium chloride and diamond. So we're just going to get straight to the point. So to sum of the compound, of course, we would get these compounds, the two compounds in separate container. We would add water. So to let's um, get right into it to to some compound. We would add water and stir. Stir, not shaken. Or is it shaken, not stir? All right, so and stir. All right. Sodium chloride. So NaCl will dissolve, and that's all we need. NaCl will dissolve, diamond will not. So sodium chloride is an ionic compound, so it would dissolve. Of course, diamond is a giant covalent structure, so it would not dissolve. And um, a mistake that um, students tend to make, we tend to say melt instead of dissolve. Now, melting has to do with um, a change in state when enough energy is applied to break the forces of attraction holding the particles together in the solid state. That has nothing to do, or that is different from um, dissolving, which has to do with um, dissociation due to you know, interaction of the particles of the substance with the particles of the solvent. So we need to um, know that. So that is that. In this um, section now, part two, where to sketch a unit of sodium chloride, and this is for for three marks. Now this is where we will draw the three-dimensional structure of sodium chloride and of course many of us we, we, we tend to be perfectionists and as i said the word perfection is my 
lines are getting a little wobbly. We don't need to be thinking about technical drawing and isometric projection. We just need to be able to draw the cuboidal structure. We need to show that because we'll get a mark for that. So we need to ensure that we we have our cube. So we're just showing three squares here. They are not really drawn to scale. So we're going to now connect lines across the faces. Right. Front and then we do one here. And from the back, coming around there. Yeah, at the back. Okay, so for the we need a line coming down in the middle. I'm going to use um broken lines for that. So we need one going across as well. We need one coming this way to the front. So we'll get a mark for the cuboidal um, structure, that's for sure. And we'll also get a mark for showing the alternating arrangement of the chloride and the sodium ions. So I will put in the chloride ions first. We'll put them at the vertices. So that would be chloride, and I'm just going to use size to distinguish. So that's chloride at the vertices. Each vertex has a chloride, and then we put in sodium, the smaller one. Sodium. Sodium. So that means we would have, we would have chloride in the middle at the top. We would have sodium here. Chloride here. We would have sodium here, sodium here, chloride here, sodium, chloride, sodium, and we can go in the middle, we would have um, sodium in the middle, at the back we would have chloride, and it's probably getting a little confusing now, but we don't want that. So you'd get your marks for this, the cuboidal arrangement, you would also get um, the marks for showing the alternating arrangement of the sodium ions and the chloride ions and then you get one mark for labeling so i would just label this is the chloride ion this is the sodium ion right show them that we know what we're talking about plus bracket cl minus and just like that you would have earned that's five marks Right, so I'm going to also post the, the link for a video that shows you how you could draw this so you could you know perfect it. We're not saying this question will come, but it's 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 a good concept to, to understand. So this is what the perfect one looks like, but as we said, we're not really aiming for perfection, we want to do enough to get our full marks, and we don't want to waste time on a question when we could be using the time to to do something else. So sodium bonding with chlorine to form sodium chloride. Sodium is a metal, chlorine is a non-metal. So we know that this is an ionic, the type of bonding here is ionic bonding. And we just put full stop, argument done. And we move right along. Now, here you're required to make predictions of properties of unknown elements based on their position in the periodic table. So, magnesium, and cal cal magnesium calcium and the unknown element X react with water. Now, students tend to, when they get a question like this, they tend to try to decipher or figure out what X is, but you're not asked to figure out what X is. It doesn't matter. It could be Jamaicanium, it doesn't matter. That doesn't exist as yet, but I'm sure somebody from Jamaica will, will discover an element and will call it Jamaicanium, right? So it doesn't matter what it is though. We just want to work with what we're given. It's in group two, so we know that these elements are all in the same family. So they are going to react 
similarly they're going to have similar chemical properties so we also know that reactivity increases down down the group so these are some of the things that should be going through your mind when you see something like this but to actually focus we look at what the question is asking of us they want us to discuss the relative reactivity of magnesium calcium and x with water and we just want to be really clean and you know simple about it we don't need to write to fill up all the lines that's there we just want to communicate effectively and you know use the right time well so we could state as it relates to reactivity towards water we could say we know reactivity increases down the group so x is the most reactive so we'll say x is greater than or the reactivity of x is greater than calcium whose reactivity is greater than magnesium and there we've written a little reactivity series for these three elements towards water that's it two marks next write a balanced chemical equation for the reaction between water and the unknown element x now they're all families they're in the same group if you know the reaction for one of them with water calcium with water you know the reaction for all of them with water pretty much so in this case we're going to write x and we put our state symbol there it's a solid very important it's reacting with water which we know is a liquid this is going to give us the hydroxide of course x is in group 2 and the hydroxide radical or the, the hydroxide ion is OH minus so we would need two of it so that's x2 plus to go with OH minus or one minus of course the charges are not the same so we just look at finding the LCM 2 into 2 1 1 into 2 2 so this tells us we're going to need one of x but two hydroxide and of course we put our bracket there to keep the group together OH minus is a group we call it a polyatomic ion or a radical so if we're going to show that we have more than one of it we have to actually put a bracket and a little subscript 2 which tells us how many of the entities we actually have present so this is a um, hydroxide of something in group 2 all hydroxides are insoluble except those of sodium potassium and ammonium so it means that this we would write it as a solid and then we of course write hydrogen gas which has to be written as h2 it ends in gen anything ends in gen that ends in gen or in their diatomic so hydrogen you write that as h2 and of course you're going to balance check to ensure that you have the same number of each atom on the left hand side as on the right hand side so here we are lhs is the left hand side rhs is the right hand side so we have one x one x good for hydrogens we have hydrogen we have four on the right but two on the left so we put a two here we put a two in front of the water to ensure that that checks the hydrogen so we now have four hydrogens yep and we now have two plus two four two oxygen two oxygen so balanced so that's that so on to the next question suggest a suggest a formula for this compound wait i'm going too fast e element x reacts with oxygen to form a stable compound suggest a formula for this compound and i like this element x is in group two so when it reacts it will form x2 plus and we know oxygen when it um, reacts it gives us the oxide ion which is o2 minus so this compound this stable compound and this is good will be a hug and a kiss xo 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 all right xo is fine now state whether an a plus solution of this compound would be acidic or basic and give one reason for your answer now the first thing we're going to do is state if it's going to be acidic or basic. There are several ways to approach this. 
seen that well one we know that the group two elements are known as the alkaline earth metals so it goes without saying that you know when they form oxides those oxides would be would be basic so we're going to state first that it would be basic and we want to also give give the reason there there's another reason we could use all right so we know that all oxides all oxides are all metal oxides, we should say, all metal oxides are basic oxides, except those of lead, aluminum, and zinc. Now, element X is in group two, it's neither lead, aluminum, and it's, it's not zinc. So there are several ways to um, approach this. So we could state, okay, we'll say group two, Metals are called so it's a group two metals are called alkaline earth metals, so they're oxides. Are basic, or we could say all metal oxides are basic except those of lead, aluminum, and zinc. And we're good to go. And then for this one, or the last one, the last question here says, state one test to determine if an aqueous solution of this compound is acidic or basic. For one mark, we don't want to over answer or spend precious time that we could be using working on another, on another question. After all, after we get full marks for this part, you know, it doesn't mean that if we answer exceptionally, it's going to be spilled over into another question so we just get straight to the point so we could test the solution with an acid base indicator like um, litmus or we could use universal indicator paper a universal indicator solution all right we could also use um a ph meter but we, as we said we don't want to over answer it's just one mark so we just get straight to the point now if you like the content here then i'm going to suggest that you consider subscribing you share the video with a friend as well i'm sure they'll find it um, helpful and um, please state in the comment what question you would like us to to go through also if you were to this question you could compare your answer with what we have here in the comments let us know what you think so we can know how we go about you know working more so you can actually benefit so as we normally close up the sessions i'm just going to say Hope you later. Thanks for watching.